It's been a long time coming, but Audi seemed to be going down in a cone of shade lately, with their portfolio looking a bit dated. As it turns out though, they have been working on a couple of new projects. And today we're going to take a look at Audi's future. And um, I have to say, it does look pretty good. Say hello to the future of Audi. This is the brand new Audi Q6, or if I should mention the full name, it's the brand new Audi Q6 e-tron Quattro. This car is going to be very important for the German brand because it paves the way to an electrified future, which seemed to be their goal not long ago. But since sales have been plummeting, uh, sales of electric vehicles have been plummeting in Europe and other parts of the world recently, it seems like Audi is trying to tone it down with the electric cars. Nevertheless, what you're about to see on this car is going to be found on other Audi models in the future, whether they will be using internal combustion engines or electrified uh, drivetrains. So we're gonna see the new Audi uh, design language on this car on the outside, and we're gonna see the new interior design that you will find on basically every new Audi moving forward. I'm saying that because not too long ago, Audi unveiled the brand new Audi A5, which looks rather the same inside. And while we are waiting to test drive the new Audi A6, this is the first car I got my hands on with the new platform and the new design. So I have to say I am pretty impressed. What is the Audi Q6 though? This is, if you will, to make things as easy as possible to understand, this is the electrified version of the Q5. Mind you, Audi changed its naming scheme rather recently once again, and they have decided that all cars with even numbers in their names will be electric. So moving forward, we're gonna see cars like the Q4, which has been around for a while, being basically the electrified version of the Q3, then we're going to see the Q6 over here, which is the electrified version of the Q5. And we already have the Q8, which is the electrified version of the Q7, if you will. In plain language, the D segment version of an SUV from Audi, if you want an electric drivetrain. It's not as big as it seems in the pictures. Overall, it has just a bit over 4.7 meters in length and the wheelbase is close to 2.9 meters. So somewhere in between the X3 and the X5, if you will, or between the X5 and the Q7, or the, the Q5 and the Q7. Um, in terms of design, well, don't be fooled, especially at the front end. This is not the headlamp. This is just the daytime running light LED uh, bit of the headlamp because Audi, just like a number of other car manufacturers the, the, these days, fell into the trap of split headlights design. So basically this is the headlamp, this is just the daytime running light, and this also doubles as a signal light. So don't be fooled by that. This is the actual headlamp. Now in terms of technology, Audi has been a leader when it comes to LEDs. So uh, you can actually configure the um, light signature on these cars and you have about eight different light signatures you can choose from and that goes for the front and the back. Mind you, this is an optional feature, not all cars get it. It looks absolutely brilliant, especially at the back. I'm going to talk about that when we get there because you have OLED lighting at the back so you can actually adjust the way the uh, tail lights look like. Also up front we have a very massive single frame grille that has been adapted because this is a, an electric car and it has been blocked out but it still retains some details in the middle because according to certain recent studies it seems like we just cannot deal with cars not having a sort of grille up front. Um, it seems like designers have done a couple of experiments with cars with absolutely no grille up front and no details that would hint 
at a grill and it seems like people just freaked out. Uh, okay, moving towards the back, this car has the S-Line package. I like the plasma blue color it has. It's an optional feature. It's about 800 euros. And you can also notice the huge wheels. On the Q6, you can get wheels from 19 inches to 21 inches. We have the optional RS wheels. 21 inch wheels on this car and they cost about 4,000 euros, but they do look good. Now, in terms of wheel size and tires, Audi said that this is the first of their electric cars that has an offset tire size front and back. So we have the 285 in the back and 255 uh, or 45, 285 in the back, 255 wide in the front. So we do have a wider tire at the back. We have Pirelli's on this car. I love the fact that we have all black trims everywhere and black um, side mirror covers. And as I said, the car is 4.77 meters long. I also like these broad shoulders and the fact that you have a charging port on every side. On this side, we have the fast charger. Uh, I'm not a fan of this automatically opening the door because I've seen these things break in the past, but I think, uh, I don't know, Audi wanted to give this car a bit more panache. This is the fast charging port and we have a slow 11 kilowatt charging port on the other side. Yeah. Not a fan of this solution. I'm not a fan of electrically operated tailgates either. Now, in terms of charging, you should know that this car has an 800 volt platform underneath, and that means it can recharge at up to 270 kilowatts. And even though we have a huge battery in the floor, 100 kilowatt hours in total, and a usable capacity of 95, 94.9, you can recharge this car in about 20 minutes from 10 to 80% which is pretty impressive. Audi says that if you have ideal conditions and a powerful enough charger, you can actually get 255 kilometers of range in 10 minutes of charge, which in my book is pretty dang impressive. Now in the back, we have a similar design to what we've seen on other Audi models. Now, what, I'm, what I want to point out in this case is the fact that to my eye, this car, in reality, looks like a raised up station wagon. It doesn't really look like a, an SUV. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. I want you to tell me in the comment section below. As I said, we have OLED, OLEDs over here in the tail lamp. You can configure them in a number of ways. They have certain animations when you turn the car on or off, when you lock it and unlock it. And this is a continuous light bar in between them and it looks absolutely brilliant. Audi has been at the top of their game in terms of lighting for a couple of years now. Furthermore, just like we've seen on other more expensive models in the past uh, in Audi's range, um, these are actually smart lights. What that means is, if a car gets too close, they will change their brightness. Every single panel will light up to warn the driver in the back that they are too close. In case of danger, they can actually have a symbol, a warning triangle over here in the bottom part of the uh, tail light to warn the driver in the back to stay back. Absolutely brilliant. We also have um, dynamic signals. So that's something we've had for a long time. In terms of boot space, 525 liters of total boot space. The good part is that you also get a trunk so you could feel, uh, you could move all the charging cables I have over here in the front. 525 liters isn't that much, to be honest. I expected a bit more considering how big the car is. You have some extra, uh, um, extra space under the floor over here. To give you an example of how much this means, Think of it this way, the Renault Scenic I tested earlier this year has a trunk of 545 liters, so 20 extra liters, and it's one segment below this car. We also have buttons over here to lower the car because it has air suspension. Mind you, not all cars come with an air suspension um, as standard. This is an optional feature on the Q6. The SQ6 does get air suspension in standard. So you can lower the rear suspension to load up items easily. We have a very low trunk boot lid and you can actually lower the rear seats using some uh, levers over here. Sitting inside, we're going to start with the rear uh, seats. Um, then we're going to move to the front ones because they are more important. Now, let's talk about build quality. The the materials used on the door card. So we have recycled plastics 
everywhere in this car. The whole point is to make the car as sustainable as possible. So there has been a lot of recycled plastic introduced in it and not only plastic, but other materials as well. So this is plastic and I would have preferred it to be a bit more qualitative. We're going to talk about pricing later on. Considering the, considering the price of this car, I would have liked more quality over here. The same goes for this plastic. I mean, I've seen this kind of plastic on cars costing about 40,000 euros. I would have preferred a bit more. Uh, we have microfiber over here on the door card. And the same goes for the plastic around these um, door openers. Uh, I would have preferred a bit more quality over here. Then let's talk about the space you get. So I'm six feet tall, about 250 pounds. This driver's seat is adjusted in my comfortable driving position, then pushed back a bit because we have the comfort access option and this is how I fit in the back. So I have some knee room over here and I do have plenty of headroom. So in that regard, I think this car has more room than a Q5. Then again, it does compare to the Q5 only in terms of exterior dimensions because this has the PPE electric platform underneath. It can have a bit more legroom because it has a longer wheelbase, as I said almost 2.9 meters. We have a flat floor in the back and you could sit four adults over here easily. I did fit three adults in the back yesterday, but that wasn't a comfortable trip uh, whatsoever. Welcome to the future of Audi part two. That's because we have on the new Q6, we have the new interior design that will be found on every single Audi model launched from this day onwards. Uh, as I said, the build quality is nice, but I would have preferred more qualitative uh, materials. For example, the same can be said, the same things I said about the um, panel on the rear door can be said on, about the panel on the front. So I would have preferred some better feeling plastic inside. And as a novelty for a lot of Audi models moving forward, we have a command panel over here on the door. So the light cluster and the buttons for adjusting the mirrors and for the seats and so on have been all moved here. While that is a ergonomic proposition because you can reach it rather easily, I did find during my days with the car that most of the time when I'm trying to close the door, I am reaching for this panel. So I, I think it's something you need to get used to over time, not to reach for the panel itself, but for the door card. But overall, I think it's a pretty interesting mix and it's just something you need to get used to. Now inside this car there's a lot of uh, gloss, bl glossy black so you'll have to you know adjust accordingly because all this material over here will attract a lot of dust and fingerprints. Uh, we have a volume button over here, buttons for different functions and a direction uh, selector over here, cup holders, we have a charging port over here Smokers package comes with this uh, ashtray. We have two USB-C ports and these are the air vents. Now let's talk about this infotainment system. So this is the new MMI. It's based on Google Automotive. So it will have embedded apps available. You have a dedicated store from Audi. Unfortunately, this car is not set up and uh, we don't have the data activated, but you will find various apps in that store that you, you can then install um, inside the car and you will find them over here. Those apps can include Spotify and other streaming services and so on, a lot of new things. Basically, this is what we've seen on the Renault cars lately or uh, Volvo, but with the Audi what with an Audi launcher over it, if you will. If you have an Android phone, you know what I'm talking about. The, um, it actually works really well. We have a shortcut menu to the side over here, not to the, uh, not uh, on top. You can activate and change a number of functions using this um, shortcut. This is the home uh, screen. This is a screen dedicated to the Audi uh, assistant. You can activate it saying, hey Audi, how hey, can I help? Tell me a joke. I don't have a data connection. Please agree to data use for online speech recognition. Then you can continue. Um, so as I said, um, the problem is this car doesn't have a data connection activated on it. So the functionalities of the assistant are quite limited. The navigation system works absolutely flawlessly. 
you can actually update it. Um, so I tried it yesterday and it works brilliantly in combination with the head-up display. It even shows the charging ports you have around you and the power they have and whether they are occupied or not. As you can see over here, for example, we have 12 charging ports and five of them are already occupied. This is the HVAC menu. Rather simple, everything has been set up rather simple. Uh, I like the fact that this screen is an OLED, so it has great contrast, great blacks and so on. And I also like the fact that we have a light bar. So when I start the car, you can see the light bar over there on the top of the dashboard. You can change its color. And interestingly enough, whenever you signal, you can actually see that corner turns green. Why is it green? Because it's safe to turn. The same goes on the other side. And whenever it's not safe to turn, that light will be red, warning you not to turn into oncoming traffic. So quite interesting overall. We also have an interesting option for the passenger, which hasn't been available on Audi models before, but we've seen on Porsches and other cars before. And I'm talking about the passenger screen. Um, the passengers have their own screen now and they can adjust a number of function, functions. This actually looks a lot like the old um, MMI system on Audi models. The trick about this screen is the fact that the driver can only see it when stationary. If we set off, I cannot no longer see it from this position. This is not necessarily a uh, new technology, but uh, I've first seen it on a Land Rover model. I don't know if it was the Evoque or the Range Rover, but a number of years ago. And it's a safety feature. Personally, and my passenger can confirm, I find it rather useless. Nobody actually uses it. It's more of a trick. I don't know. Nobody's going to use it. Now, um, the steering wheel, pretty nice. We have the S-Line package on it. We have these buttons over here for various functions, and you can adjust what you see over here in the instrument cluster. The instrument cluster is 12 inches in diameter, and the um, infotainment screen is 14.5. This one can be adjusted using these buttons over here. So you have one for the left side of the screen. You can change what's shown on the left side, and then you have a button for the right side that changes what you can see on the right side. Right here in the middle, whenever you start the car and you go into drive, you'll have an indicator showing you the traffic situation around you. So if you have cars on the left, it will show cars and so on, and you have the speedometer at the bottom over here. And as I said, we have a huge head-up display over here. Looks absolutely brilliant, works absolutely great, and I absolutely love it. Now, one thing I really need to show you though is um the whole the whole uh eight different types of exterior lighting choices so this is seven out of eight eight out of eight six out of eight five four three, two, and one. I want you to tell me in the comment section below which one is your favorite. So that's about it. The last thing I need to tell you about is the Bang & Olufsen sound system. There are two sound systems available, one with four, uh, 730 watts and one with 850 watts. We have the top one over here, which also includes speakers in the headrests, and they are next level. This is actually one of the best sound systems I've listened to in recent years. It is very, it has a very clear sound. The sound separation is very good. Frequency separation is good. A whole lot of stage and the surround system is great. Furthermore, whenever you activate the navigation system, for example, or you get a notification as the driver, you hear the driving instructions in the headrest. You can uh, hear uh, notifications in the headrest. Uh, and even when you listen to music, you can actually hear it pretty, pretty loud, actually, in the headrest. It's absolutely brilliant. That said, let's head off. Let's see what kind of range I got out of it, what kind of energy consumption, and how this car drives. Okay, so as I pointed out uh, before, the Audi Q6 is a revolution for the German brand. It uses a brand new platform called PPE. This is a dedicated electric platform developed in collaboration with 
the guys from um, Porsche. That has happened before on the Audi e-tron GT and the Porsche Taycan, which both use the same electric platform. But this time things are going a bit deeper because this new PPE platform or E3 as Audi calls it, will be used on more models moving forward. So it's an 800 volt platform, which means you should charge this car pretty rapidly. As I said, up to 270 kilowatts of power. But even more impressive is the fact that according to uh, the company from Ingolstadt, um, the regenerative brakes on this car can deliver up to 220 kilowatts of power back in the system. And that is quite impressive. Um, but before we talk about that, let's talk about what kind of engine choices, or better yet, electric motor choices you have on the Q6. So initially, just this model and the SQ6 were launched. And even though Audi wouldn't confirm it, I have a hunch that both this car, the Audi Quattro, each, uh, the Audi Q6 Quattro and the SQ6 have basically the same layout. That's because they have the same amount of torque and both of them have two electric motors. Both of them have an asynchronous motor on the front axle and a permanently synchronous motor on the rear axle. Quite interesting, right? So this car we're driving, the Q6, has 387 horsepower in total at its disposal. Uh, and 855 newton meters of torque. The SQ6 has 517 horsepower and the same amount of torque. What a coincidence, right? So for a car like this, we're talking about a lot of torque, even though we are talking about an electric car. So as we know, electric cars have a lot of torque anyway, and it is delivered instantly but in the range there will be a on some markets it already popped up there will be a rear wheel drive version with only one permanently excited synchronous motor on the rear axle with 306 horsepower um, and considering it has the same battery as this car which is 95 kilowatt hours uh, in uh, usable capacity I'm guessing it will have a lot of range I've heard that there will be a smaller battery offered on this car an 80 kilowatt hour battery later down the line so that could be an even more affordable uh, proposition from Audi because at the end of the day uh, affordability plays a huge part in the adoption of electric cars so that's what we're driving today what's interesting is the setup with a permanently excited uh, motor on the back and an uh, asynchronous motor at the front and that's because most of the time when you don't really need all the power the car will be driving using the rear axle alone that is of course in order to save um, energy so that's why the front axle has an, an asynchronous motor which can be decoupled so the car can just roll with it now when we're talking we were talking about regenerative brakes earlier so the way it works on this car whenever you take your foot off the go faster pedal the rear axle starts recuperating energy and they actually manage to create a system that feels very natural normally on electric cars when you're using the brake pedal, there's a squishy part at the beginning of the pedal travel that actually has no feel. And it makes you wonder whether the car brakes or not. And that's because on that initial part, the car uses regenerative braking. Uh, it, that doesn't happen on this car though. Uh, this has a very natural feel to it, even though the system works the same. So on the first part of the pedal bite, the car is braking using regenerative brakes. So it does feel very natural, but Leaving that aside, the, th the one thing that impressed me the most, I mean, the power delivery is instantaneous, but it has been configured to feel like an Audi. What that means is, even though the power delivery is instantaneous, it, is, it isn't a sudden burst like it happens on other cars. It is delivered very smoothly and you do feel the torque, but it doesn't really hit you in the back of the head. That's of course, if you're not in dynamic mode. In comfort mode or in efficiency mode, the torque is delivered incredibly smoothly. And I love that about electric cars from traditional car makers because they have tried and to some extent they have managed to succeed to deliver the power and to make you feel very 
um, familiar with the way the car drives and the car actually feels familiar because you've driven one of their cars before. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but if you drive an electric Audi, it feels like an Audi, even though it has an electric drivetrain. It doesn't feel like a Tesla. A BMW feels like a BMW. A Mercedes feels like a Mercedes, even though it has an electric drivetrain. And that is, I think, the key moving forward into this electrified feature because let's be honest there will be very few things to separate these brands in the future and these kind of details could mean the success or the death of certain companies uh, what impressed me the most though on this car is the suspension we're talking about an air suspension that absolutely blew my mind it is incredibly refined and comfortable despite the fact that we're we're riding on 21 inch wheels you could feel certain hiccups in the road but only in extreme cases and just for a tiny second otherwise this car behaved perfectly as a friend of mine put it the other day you feel like this car doesn't really have wheels when you're driving on the road it is not only incredibly refined comfortable and not only is the car's ride absorbing every bump perfectly, but there's almost no tire noise coming into the cabin from under the wheel wells, at least at under 100 km an hour. Let's put it that way. Over 100 km an hour on the highway, I think road noise that does become to become does start to become apparent in the cabin. But even then, it's incredibly quiet on board the Audi Q6. And this suspension is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love it a bit. And it's even more impressive when you drive this car in a sportier fashion. What I was disappointed of, though, was the uh, weight of this car. So we're talking about a car that's basically in the D segment. So around the size of an X3, of a Q5, just a bit bigger. Not that much bigger, though. And it tips the scale at about 2.3 tons. Now, I know we have a 100 kilowatt hour battery on board, but still, I hoped for something a bit lighter. And that becomes very apparent when you're try, trying to drive this car a bit faster. Now, the Quattro system is long gone if we're talking about electric cars. We don't have a the crown gear differential. We don't have anything like that. All it means on this car is that it has all wheel drive, but somehow the stability control system does work its magic and you have incredible amounts of grip all the time i think a big part in that is played by the rear axle which has wider tires and since the mo more powerful motor is at the back this car can oversteer rather easily and it feels incredibly nice to play around with um, another thing i love about this car is the head-up display I, I already told you about it it is incredible it, it it has such beautiful animations everything that pops up has an animation whenever the, the the speed limit changes you have an animation it doesn't just change from 50 for example 50 kilometers an hour to 70 kilometers an hour you have an animation that flips the two uh, road signs and then you have a red warning light whenever you get too close to the cars in front. When you have the adaptive cruise control turned on, you have, you have a lot of animations and you have augmented reality, which means when you have the onboard navigation system turned on, it actually sh projects different objects on the road, like a roundabout or uh, instructions where to go. And it is absolutely brilliant. So even though I'm a bit disappointed by the instrument cluster, this head-up display does make up for all of it. Unfortunately, it's not standard. So, if you're going to buy this car, you will be disappointed by the standard instrument cluster without the uh, support of the head-up display. But if you take the head-up display, you will solve that problem. I guess this could be interpreted as a way for Audi to make some extra cash. I also know that you will be most... I also know that you will be in extremely interested in the energy consumption figures I got. After all, we are talking about an new platform that will be used by audi on a number of its new models and you are wondering whether if if it's efficient or not so around town i saw an average energy consumption of around 19.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered not great not terrible um, i did record an average speed of about 19 kilometers an hour which is a bit low it was incredibly busy when i did my range test i did 100 kilometers uh, around town with it um, and I did have to use the AC a lot so 
I think in less busy cities, you could go down to 16, 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers cover. But as it stands, I got 19.5, which is basically an, an, an average of about 475 kilometers of range with a full charge, which is enough for most people. Then I hopped on a series of B-Roads, that's where I got about 16.5 kilowatt hours to 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered. That's a range of about 538 uh, with a full charge. And then I hopped on the highway where the energy consumption actually surprised me with an average of 25.6, let's say, close to 26 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered. That should translate into less than 400 kilometers of range on the highway, about 370 by my calculations. So not exactly great on the highway, um, but yes, I did keep it at 130 kilometers an hour, not 120, like um, the speed limit is in most countries around Europe. So mm, give or take, you could think about this car as rather efficient around town, but not that efficient on the highway. It, this is basically the story of all electric cars out there today. The good, the good part is that um, you can recharge it really fast, as I said, and um, that will probably make it a good cruiser later down the line. But overall, I actually enjoyed my time with this car. There are some things that could be improved, of course. There's no perfect car out there. I would have preferred maybe some better materials inside in certain areas, maybe a bit more efficiency, maybe a bit less uh, issues because I did have some software issues, but I think those are to some extent inherent in cars that are brand new, running on a brand new platform with brand new software. I'm pretty sure they will be fixed in time. Um, but overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the car, which is something you would expect considering that this car has a price tag of 106,000 euros. Yes. 106,000 euros. Um, the, the starting price is about 76,000, but we have optional features on it for uh, up to about 30,000 euros. So yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. If you're thinking about paying, I mean, in order to get your mind around how expensive it is, think of it, would you pay 100,000 euros for a fully optioned, very powerful Q5? Probably not. Maybe you would for an RSQ5 or an SQ5, but then we're not talking about the SQ6 here, are we? So, kind of expensive. I think if you keep the option boxes in check and you don't really take every single one of them, you could get away with buying this car at about 80, 85,000 euros. Uh, but yeah, overall it is quite expensive. And I'm wondering whether you would buy one or not, if you're considering it in this electric car space. Now, until next time, don't forget that I put in a lot of work to do these reviews. So if you would please give me a like and of course a subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. Until next time, don't forget to feed your passions. Ciao.